Hello everyone, my name is Manuel and I work at The Behemoth. At the beginning of the year, Flash support ended for browsers and that means that some of them, like Chrome, completely stopped the display of this style of content. So games and animations are no longer available. But a group of very talented people are working on a solution for that. But before we tell you about that, we want to explore the memories of developers that started their careers creating Flash games, and hopefully you will learn a thing or two, as we did in the process of creating this content for you. Our first guest is Tom Fulp, and we're going to be talking about his early days developing games, the challenges and the greatness of Flash, and also the beginnings of Newgrounds. Join us in this conversation as we dive into the past. <laughs> So, we welcome you, Tom, and first of all, how are you? How are things so far this year? Hi, good. Doing well. Yeah, just uh, having another another day uh, with, our, with our current reality at home. Uh, I know, right? We're, we're all here, and I think every, every guest that we've had on the show is always answering like this, like, well, we're here, you know, it's another day, we keep rolling. Um, but today we're going to be talking about something, I hope it's interesting for everybody, because, of course, Flash has been on the news lately, but instead of you know, covering the bad side of it, the kind of bad side, because we have some good news at the end as well. We wanted to go and get those good memories back and learn, actually. I've learned quite a bit talking with the, all of the guests that are going to appear in this uh, show, in this uh, podcast, that there are plenty of stories to be told, and hopefully today is going to be one of those days. So my first question, Tom, is if you can take us a little bit back in time, what was your first interaction with Flash was just an animation, a game right away, someone showed it to you. Yeah, so when I go back to my first introduction to Flash, I kind of go back a little further because it's sort of what Flash was to me was like growing up I would I would animate on a computer and I would make like text-based games on a computer, but there was never a way mm -hmm. that you could combine your animation and your programming for your text-based game like no easy way. And I always wondered why like why I couldn't have a program that would let me combine my code with my animation. And when Flash came along, that was sort of the big moment where it was like, here it is, like I can I can draw and animate and I can make interactive games in this. And the early Flash was was mostly kind of point and click because it was made for interactive menus. So my first experience uh, was I made like a tweened animation of my my dad had like a ham radio club. And I did like a, I drew their logo in Flash. And then I just looked up like another ham radio club and drew their logo. And then I had my dad's ham radio club like smash the other ham radio club logo. <laughs> like I don't even know if they had like any sort of, I don't, I don't know what, what they thought of each other. But, and so that's, that was like my, my first thing I made. And then from then on, I, I learned how to make like the buttons. So you could, you could make a button and clicking on it could make something play. So, you know, I immediately just started trying to make interactive, interactive things with it. Oh, that's awesome. Did you start right away with like Flash 1? Yeah, I was Flash, I think it was 3, unless it was 2. It's possible it was Flash 2 and then 3, but um, I should remember that. But I can't really remember. I, I don't think it was Flash 1, though. But um, okay. Flash 3 is my strongest memory of early games because uh, I made a lot of stuff with that that had all the tell target I features. So maybe it was Flash 3 from the start, and that was 1998. So after this Battle of the Logos, what was the first game that you maybe shared with others? So I basically made a, a, a web page called Tele, Telebubby Funland. Um, mm -hmm. It was originally called Teletubby Funland, but then I changed it to be a little safer. Um, but uh, it was basically a, a web page making fun of the Teletubbies, where I just made interactive games of you know Teletubbies and all sorts of you know, horrible situations. And uh, like there's a shot competition one where you, you know, press press your button to do a shot with one of the Teletubbies until he until he throws up, you know, stuff like that. Um, <laughs> so that was like kind of the first thing I put online. And it got a takedown notice from the BBC. And I... Oh my God. <laughs> and I put like a... I made a post about that. And then there was this internet freedom group based in, in the UK, I think, that they, they reached out and they... They did a bunch of press and a press release saying like they can't make you take this down this is your right to parody you know the teletubbies and um so i then i kept the site up and i changed the names just to make them like parody names 
and then it got all this attention and you know people get really riled up when they see you know someone being told they can't do something so that kind of made yeah. everyone get extra excited for it and uh you know went from there well uh, that's one way to start things i guess <laughs> <laughs> for many for many others and of course everyone that's listening we have some pretty good stories like this one in the next episode so i invite you to stay listening to them as they come but for many others the process of kind of discovering new things within flash was the main reason for them to keep trying you know keep making other games and experimenting even new genres within flash itself was that the case for you as well yeah no that was the most exciting thing about it was it was so new and you felt like you felt like you could do things people had never done before and then also other people would surprise you like every day you could be surprised by seeing what someone else did like one of the things i did early on was it flash didn't have variables early on so i would tinker with ways to use the tell target of movie clips to track data so like if you click on an item you tell a movie clip to go to frame 10 instead of being on frame one and then when you get to a situation later in the game it would basically tell that movie clip to play from where it is and if it played from frame one a certain event would happen if it played from frame 10 a different event would happen so it would actually change what happened based on you know what you did which was the way i would track information without actually being able to store it in a variable and like that felt you know i felt really proud of that when i did that and then i would just basically went on to try to recreate genres that i liked so i made i made a lot of beat em up engines in flash you know which ultimately led to castle crashers and um also mm -hmm. like with alien hominid i wanted to do like a run and gun engine it was like kind of like perfect that i was kind of tinkering with that and then dan had this alien character and we made a run and gun game with it you know like side scrolling shooters it was just kind of fun like the first side scrolling shooter i made was before flash had keyboard input so it was all mouse controlled like it would just track your mouse mm -hmm. and if you click the mouse button it would shoot and then mm -hmm. when flash first added keyboard input it was really stilted where it would like if you held a key down it would count, it would be kind of like when you hold a key down in real life where you, like you see the letter A and then it pauses and then a bunch of A's start appearing. Mm -hmm. It was the same mm -hmm. way where if you held right, your character would like step right and stop and then they would keep going right after like that delay. So like I was trying mm -hmm. to, and in retrospect, I think there were some other ways I could have done it better, but like I was trying to work around that sort of stuff. So it was always fun to sort of, you had these constraints that became these challenges yeah. that you wanted to overcome. Yeah, that, that sounds very interesting because it's not just putting the game or, or having the idea of the game. You have to overcome all of these challenges to get it together, right? Yeah, and then you have to make so. it actually downloadable on a dial-up connection. So like the early games, <laughs> the goal was usually to be around like 100K because uh -huh. like a one meg game was, you know, people would get upset waiting to download a one meg game back then, so. <laughs> oh my God. So you mentioned before Flash, you were doing uh, like text-based games and things like that, but... What was your background going into Flash itself? You were all self-thought or had something else kind of going on there? Yeah, with Flash, I, I basically downloaded it and then just did like a, the built-in tutorial, like learned how to tween was like the first, like it's, it's funny. It's like stuff that seems so simple now was really hard to get your brain wrapped around. And I actually made like a mm -hmm. tutorial too to help people with the, the tweening and the keyframes, like having to understand that like you have a keyframe on frame one and a keyframe on frame five and then like, Frames two through four will just be what was on frame one. And then you mm -hmm. can tween it, but you have to make it a symbol. And if like, if you don't know to make it a symbol, your tween won't work. So <laughs> like, even that's like a thing you have to, you know, it's easy to not understand mm -hmm. at the very start of it all. And then at what point here did you decide that this was the career that you wanted to pursue? Because you were not, you were not a programmer when you, you were doing the first Flash games, right? Um, so I, I had programming experience in like Pascal and some C++. Uh, okay. And I was working in web development. So like my career trajectory was basically I grew up wanting to make video games. Like I, I used to make video game design documents and I'd mail them off to companies to try and get them to make the games. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what I wanted to do. But it, I, I came from an area that didn't have like Pennsylvania and Philadelphia didn't have any game industry. The idea of moving to California was like too overwhelming to consider. So like I never mm -hmm. considered the option that I could like move to California and join the game industry. So I was on my way into like a, a career in web development. So I was working for like for a while I was working at GlaxoSmithKline or SmithKline Beecham before they merged. And I was working and I was working at a company that was kind of doing web development for pharmaceutical sites and financial sites, you know, getting into database development. And that's kind of where, you know, my web work is, is I'm at this weird intersection of like web development and games it's where it all kind of mm -hmm. like collides. So it was just sort of like a yeah, it was fortunate. It was it was a fortuitous turn of events that I got to make web games and that that actually led into making big big video games. So you had this 
um, the experience of web development and at what point or how many games did you have in your in your shoulder when you decided to create maybe a first version of Newgrounds? Was did it all start with Newgrounds or you have a site before that for for Flash of course? Before Newgrounds, I I was on Prodigy. And I had a video game club on Prodigy that was a Neo Geo fan club. And then I made a fanzine called Newground. And I would mail the fanzine out to the members of the Neo Geo club. And at the same time, I was programming. The text-based adventures were for like dial-up bulletin boards. So people would actually like dial into a computer that someone like ran a bulletin board on. And they could actually play like a game I made on that. And um, so then when the web came along, this was like around 1995, um, when the web came along and we got dial-up web access, it came with um, a little bit of personal storage space. So I immediately put a web page, like I, you know, that's when I like dug into HTML. And it was nice because you could just view the source of any web page back then. And you could learn HTML by looking at the page source of other websites, where nowadays if you do that, it's way too confusing. But back then it was like a lot easier to take apart. So I made a web page and since Newground was my fanzine name. I called the website Newground Remix, and I would just sort of make goofy stuff and stick it on there. And and that would it was always fun because you get feedback from people. You'd have people emailing you, and it was like fun to get that sort of feedback. And then when I went to college, I couldn't access the college had its own network, and I couldn't access my old space because I had to dial in to access my old storage space. So I, on the college um, side, I started a new thing called Newground Atomics, and that was just like a, a, you know, another revision of it. And then it was in 1998, Inside Edition contacted me, and Inside Edition wanted to do a piece about the Teletubby stuff. And I was like, wow, like, if this is going to be on TV, I can't have my website be a bunch of random characters. It's like some host name with a bunch of random gibberish. So then I, I went and I registered Newgrounds.com. And, and then I basically moved all my stuff and got it all merged onto there as like the, the new end all thing. And then I never heard back from Inside Edition. They never actually put it on TV. But uh, it, that was the, still was a big, it was a big move because once I had the domain name, then people would remember it and start coming back. And it kind of created this, you know, recurring fan base that could uh, hang out there. Yeah. So it, it was all your games at first, right? Yeah. It was my games uh, in 98 and 99. And then 99, I... I had like major parts of the site where I'd like make kind of major features, but then I had a part of the site called the portal, which is where I put all my like unfinished projects. So it was just sort of like a, like a weird little, you know, like picture like a black hole of like throwing stuff in and um, mm -hmm. it had like an animation of like a black hole. And then when there was other people that would make flash, like not everyone had their own web hosting. So mm -hmm. like I'd meet other people making flash and they'd be like, you put it on new grounds and I'd say like, I'll stick it in the portal. Cause that's just like a list of stuff. So I start mm -hmm. putting stuff in there and then that just started getting more and more popular where every day people were emailing me their files and I'd for every file I'd have to manually set up a page for it and then people would edit their files they'd like make a fix to something so now I'm like replacing mm -hmm. their files and I was like this is really on to something here so I had a friend Ross who was like a good database programmer and I basically brought him in and built in like an automated system uh, to let people instantly upload and publish their flash content and that was like the first that was the first time people could instantly publish games or animation on the internet, um, which was like a scary, like, like I think back then it wasn't something that like people would even invest in, I don't think, so it was such a scary idea of like, you're gonna let strangers upload things on your website. It was a little risky, but it all, all kind of worked out and it just kept growing from there. And then over the years, you saw that become more of what like social media became about, you know, things like YouTube and, mm -hmm. and everything else where people could upload their content. But back then it wasn't, it wasn't like the norm. So let, let, let's say when you, ha when you had Newgrounds and you had Portal, what other options did other developers, as you were saying, not everyone had their own, their own website, right? What, what were the other options? When, when the automated system launched in 2000, it, it was basically you either had your own website or Newgrounds. And then once Newgrounds launched, there were people that would build similar systems to Newgrounds. So it wasn't like instant, but like within like a year, there was probably stuff cropping up. But um, it was closer. It was really like a few years before the game portals became popular. And I think part of that was that Flash games really like at the time, Flash games felt amazing. Like every day was like exciting. When you look back at them now, you realize that in the scheme of content, like they don't hold a lot of them really don't hold up well. 
So I think it, part mm-hmm. of it was that the Flash games had to get better before the idea of like a dedicated Flash game site became, mm-hmm. you know, more of a potential thing. So it was a few years later that the Flash game portals came along. And with, with most of those, people would have to submit their game and then the portal would, you know, feature or, the, or they would just steal the games. There was actually, I'd say the majority of portals just stole the games. Oh, no. Like if your game was on Newgrounds, they would just take it and put it on their site. And that just sort of became a booming thing. I kind of looking back now, it's like I really kind of missed out because the the gaming sites were actually like the super successful thing versus what I was doing, which was always just kind of like a crazy thing. <laughs> you mentioned that when you brought your friend in for the database, um, you already were thinking, oh, we're into something here. But what were your, your expectations there? Were you thinking on like making money later? You, did you think it was going to become big or you were just trying to, you know, provide something for your fellow Flash developers to, you know, have a place? At the time, it was just exciting to do it. And it was definitely like awareness that this could be like a business too, but it was also like scary because not knowing like how expensive this would get to host people's content. Um, Like a lot of it was just being like too stupid to know that some of these things might be like a disaster. Uh, And then just being Mm -hmm. lucky that, you know, it all worked out. Yeah, it was weird too, because like up and down, like, you know, initially I would pay for the hosting and it was like the hosting was like $30 a month. And then the hosting was like $100 a month. Mm. And I had to start running ads. And then when I start running ads, we're making money. And then all of a sudden the site was making money. And then I was like still going to school. And one day it's like I, I got a notification that our ad network had kicked us off the ad network because the content what? that people would upload on the site was too unpredictable. You, know, you never know what people are going to upload mm. and you can't really run ads on unpredictable stuff like that. <laughs> um, so I had to like go to class and I'm just like sitting in class knowing that like like the hosting fees at that point were like a thousand dollars a month and now i had no ads and so i had to just you know scrape around and find other advertisers so it was always this this weird play and then things would take off and then the dot-com crash happened when the when the crash happened like you basically like got get ad companies that would pay you they'd pay you net 90 so you'd wait three months after the end of the month to get your payment Mm -hmm. so when by the time that you found out they weren't paying you you already were running their ads for four months so it's like you were oh no it just got like that so that was like a thing. Um, so it's always had ups and downs and it's it's like it has its moments of profitability, but it's been all in all, it's actually been like more unprofitable than profitable <laughs> when you add up all the years. But uh, but it still had some really good years that, you know, were cool to have. And um, and yeah, it's a, it's weird. It's like I I would like it to be a successful business, but I also, um, you know, keep doing it regardless. I guess my next question connects very well with this, but because at this point, I've talked with others uh, for the podcast that, as I said before, are coming later. And all of them pretty much have mentioned that Newgrounds is like a crucial pillar on what they were doing as young kids to what they ended up becoming. And at Newgrounds is mostly the, you know, the breaking point on when they decided to become a developer. So th- that has some weight. Uh, so how do, you, how do you feel about that? Because y- you probably know this, you know, that a lot of game developers now started thanks to Newgrounds being there and the community of Newgrounds. No, yeah, that's a, it's a good feeling. Like it's nice, it's nice to feel like it's had that positive impact and that it's, you know, inspired people or taught people or or introduced people to things they didn't know were possible. So that's like always a good feeling. It always goes both ways where it's like, I always feel lucky that these talented people find the site and use the site. So, you know, we all kind of keep each other motivated and inspired in that way. Oh yeah. And this is where there was this other aspect of Newgrounds, right? So we've talked about how people can put their games in there, but what about this community side? As you were saying, more of, you know, the social media of what social media is now. And how did all all of that evolved within the site? What were you what were you thinking to, to make that happen? First interactive thing on the site was actually a, 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 guest, a guest book. So there used to be these like CGI scripts you could stick on a website and then you'd have a page that people could leave a comment on. So we had a guest book first and then I had, then I got like a CGI script for a bulletin board system. So that was like the original version of the forums was that. Um, But then later Ross rebuilt the bulletin board. So we had our own custom, basically Ross programmed the, like the user registration system and the, and then the new bulletin board system that would make use of that. And, and with the automated portal, we made it so that you could vote on things and you could review things and you'd get points for voting. So it would be encouragement to come back every day. That was actually based on old mm-hmm. bulletin board dial-up games because on 
in an old dial-up game, like every day before school, you'd log in and you'd do like your, your 10 forest fights to collect your gold and your XP. And that was basically all mm -hmm. you could do for the day. So with this, it was like, oh, you'll come to the site every day and you're vo you'll vote on five things and get your XP and that'll make your votes more powerful. So um, that was like a, before the term gamification, I think, or that stuff, gamification of the, of the system. Yeah, it all just sort of grew from there. But then there was also things that we like missed out on, like... Like, it's weird how we had things that were close, but not quite. Like, we, you could favorite content, but we never had, like, a like button. And, um, mm. and similarly, you could, you could, um, you could have a list of favorite artists, but we didn't have a feed. Uh, like, you'd get an email every night that said what people uploaded, but we didn't have, like, a feed page where you could look at things. So, like, the mm -hmm. site, even now, the site, like, nowadays, the site has a feed, and we treat the heart button more like a like button, even though it's never quite... It's never quite been like as simple as like Twitter or like Facebook, but you know even now we have a feed, but it's not it's not as central to the site as the way like Twitter and other you know modern social media sites are. So it's like some people still don't even quite realize it's there because we don't kind of make that the 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 heart and soul of everything. What about the the moment the beginning of this year where we kind of stopped having support of Flash on browsers? How did that, that affect Newgrounds? I guess you guys have been working on a solution for it in, in advance, right? Yeah, so that's that's been like a decade long question. So this, <laughs> so basically we, I guess it was, you know, by 2012, whenever the Steve, like the Steve Jobs letter was sort of like the writing on the wall when he announced yeah. that the iPhone, you know, wouldn't support Flash and basically said Flash was bad and Flash had to go away. So we kind of knew, you know, the future we had to be ready. So one thing with the site is we'd always had it be like the Flash portal where the games and movies were always part of the Flash portal. Um, so when we did our 2012 redesign, that was the first time we officially start referring to the, everything as games and movies instead of just referring to it all as Flash. And we, that same year, we added um, the video upload feature so you could upload a uh, video instead of like a Flash file. Um, and then we up, added the HTML5 upload feature for games so you could upload a game that wasn't made in Flash. Um, so that was all 2012. And then Similarly, like uh, Mike, even before that, Mike, who was working at Newgrounds, who currently works at the Behemoth, uh, he created the software called Swivel, which was basically this free software we gave people that let them convert their Flash movies to video format because there was nothing that there was nothing that made like a perfect video conversion. So mm -hmm. this solved a big problem there, and it was sort of like a double-sided thing where that let us start converting all the old Flash content on Newgrounds into video to help make it run on phones and preserve it if Flash ever went away. But it also let everyone move all their content to YouTube. So when like we first started giving that out, like it basically like sped up the process of you know YouTube becoming a, a more popular destination for animation. Because um, we actually like, even though YouTube launched in 2005, we really kind of held out for like a good five years before it went nuts. So then we just sort of, and then we had to adapt the site to mobile too, which that's like another part of this past decade. And then we made this software, we made like a Newgrounds player software, which wasn't like a perfect solution. Because, you know, Mike, Mike always believed the perfect solution would be to, you know, make a Flash emulator or something that can run the SWF files. But that, that seemed, that didn't seem like uh, something that would be easily done. So mm -hmm. we had we made a desktop player that at least could launch games and let you like play the games and earn your medals and high scores and still interface with the website. So that was sort of like, you know, our fallback to like if, you know, when Flash is removed from browsers, people can still use this. But Mike really like just held firm that and what he believed and he he started Ruffle and, uh, you know, which I was, I was super excited to see. So Mike basically started as an open source project, you know, once once it started like showing some results, you know, people were getting involved and it got a lot of really talented people involved. And now to date, Ruffle um, can run most of the AS2 content. So basically, like right now we run it for pretty much every animation on the site and every game before 2007. And then like a, and then any any games after 2007 that that work with it, we'll run it with. And then they're still working on AS3 support. Basically, Flash at one point Flash changed the way the games were made. They switched from Action Script 2 to Action Script 3. And the difference is like a big difference. So Ruffle has to build a lot of functionality to run the AS3 games. But it's been really exciting. We we just had like a jam this month where people are making new Flash games that run in Ruffle. So there's like new Flash games appearing on the internet and you can play them in your browser. And you can play them on your phone, which like playing on a phone was something you could never do before. So that's been really exciting to see that now. Um, and just all around, it's just like a fun, really fun project to to watch talking about 
projects? What are you working on now? Are you still using Animate for your projects? So I am still using Flash, um, but I, have, I actually have to use old Flash because I'm programming with AS2. I'm using mm. old tools to to get you know the old tools to make games like Alien Hominid and Castle Crashers run on console is based on on AS2, which is also my comfort zone. Like I like programming with mm -hmm. it. So I have to use old Flash and, and make that. And currently I'm working on Nightmare Cops, which is a upcoming console game where you're, you're cops that fight people's nightmares. And it's all, you know, hand drawn in Flash and it's gonna be gonna be a fun game. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, where can people find out more about uh, the game and about you? For Nightmare Cops, we have, we have a, a Nightmare Cops Twitter account. So twitter.com slash Nightmare Cops. Uh, we have a trailer that's up on Newgrounds and YouTube. So if you search Nightmare Cops, you should find it. Haven't actually set up like a formal website for it. I kind of, I, I had always wanted to keep it a secret until I always kind of wanted to drop it out of nowhere. Because I mm -hmm. thought like in this day and age, that's like a, an exciting yeah. way to, to do stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, we have kind of leaked things out, but we try not to leak out too much because we don't. We don't want it all to feel familiar when it comes out. We want it to be full of surprises. So we try to try not to be too too much until it's until it's done. That sounds great. Sounds like a good st strategy. Well, uh, thank you very much, Tom, for all of this very nice story. I think we all learned a little bit more. Uh, so is is there anything else that you wanted to tell our audience today? Just maybe around Flash. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, because it's hard. It's hard for me to recommend Flash. Like even though I love Flash and I still use Flash. It's hard, like if someone comes to me now and says, I want to make games, it's hard to like say, well, you should make them in Flash because it kind of feels like it yeah. is still like a, a dead language. It's sort of like, um, it's like the hobby scene of like the people that, you know, make old games on the Amiga or the old, old consoles. Like it's something uh -huh. for someone that might want to make something weird, but it's also not like a true path forward. So nowadays I'm always looking for like the next Flash and there's, there's still nothing quite like Flash. Um, like I've tried Game Maker and I try Construct and I like those and I like recommend those and, you know, and Unity is cool. Although Unity makes mm -hmm. bloated web games, so it's not, not as ideal for the <laughs> web. Um, hopefully it'll get better. And, uh, you know, there's something called Wick, which is like a web-based thing that's actually is a lot like Flash. So that has potential if it, if it keeps going. Um, mm -hmm. but it is weird. It's weird how Flash is kind of like, you know, it's kind of ended like a decade ago yet. There's been nothing as that that lets like an artist and programmer kind of work together in the same way that yeah. Flash did, and that's mm -hmm. something that I feel like it's like a big loss, it's like a big loss to the world and like what could have what could have been created if there was something even better than Flash because it feels like there should be something even better than Flash by now and you know hopefully we'll still see it. So I guess that's what I'll just say is hopefully there's something great coming in the future. Uh, hopefully that sounds that sounds promising. Hopefully we we just have to wait. Well, once again, thank you very much, Tom. I really appreciate your time. And yeah, for everybody else, we have new episodes coming. So stay tuned, more stories about Flash and then how we're gonna keep it for the future. At least all the content is gonna be alive for the future. So stay tuned and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.